Well, welcome everyone. It's fantastic to have you with us in session two of Song of Songs. And uh, I just pray that that as we navigate this course, that you would be drawn deeper and deeper into the things of the Father. But before we go any further, um, let's just stop and invite him into this process. And so, yes, Father, we thank you for your word that is alive and transformative and and powerful. And we just we just so thank you for that word, the word that you've given us. And I, I thank you for um, your Holy Spirit and thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're the one who inspired this word, but you're also the one who will come and illuminate it to us, that you would give us that spirit of wisdom and, and, and revelation knowledge that we could unpack this um, and receive not just information, but but life-changing building blocks um, in our relationship with you, that we would be transformed by it. Oh, yes, Jesus, that you would love us into loveliness. Um, so we just come and we just come and say, have your way with us today. Amen. All right. We're going to dive straight in. Um, and we, we established quite a bit of the basics last week. But before we get into the actual verses tonight, just a few things that are on my heart that I just want us to, to navigate. Just a reminder that this book is allegory. It is poetry. It is, um, you know, a subtle art form um, and nuances and 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 symbols and metaphors and it's it's just this rich beautiful picture and poem and opera or whatever but it's it's not it's not just basic English language um, and why I'm saying that is is it is as we as we go into this book we need to remember that this is a it is a place of discovery where we we take the remains we take the hint and we go into the drash, into the, the the something deeper, and 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 unpack it with God, and 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 navigate it by the Holy Spirit into sword, into into His revelation, um, and that is my heart. That 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 we we understand that this is not. It, it is not just on that pashat, on that road level, on the basic literal level. It is so much deeper, and there's so much that there's so many nuances that we need to explore, and there's there's layers upon layers, and. We we really 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 need to keep remembering that this is not this is written not in our Western world where everything is linear and one dimensional and sequential. This is this is a Hebrew understanding where it's 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 a mystical understanding in the sense of what I mean by that is is it's it's it's, it's holistic. It's 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 got it's got many layers to it. It's got many depths to it. It's it's, it's got nuances to it. And so there's so much more than just face value um and and the hebrew the hebrew writers understood that they understood that the word of god was 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 just this intricate um uh, uh, i want to say conglomeration but this intricate um joining together of 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 all of these layers of of god's truth that we get invited into and there's just layers upon layers upon layers and to be honest i don't think we'll ever discover it all and that's why when the rabbis used to unpack it, they used to talk about the word of God as as the diamond, as as this many faceted diamond that you hold up to His light, and and you turn it, and He by His His spirit He He shines His light through that and makes it real to us. But as you're turning it, you you seeing this facet, and I'm seeing that facet, and 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 and, and in in the idea of the rabbis and the Hebrew um the Hebrew um rabbis of old, it wasn't a case. Well, who's right? You or me, and that, that's the way in our Western world we, we would want to look at it, a topic of going, well, you know, there's this opinion and this opinion, so who's right? But in a Hebrew understanding, it's not, it's, it's just yep, it's yes, it's both and. It's, it's, it's just different facets of a greater concept. It's, it's greater depths, and so it's, it's oh, you're gaining this, and I'm gaining this, and, and it's all becoming um, one part of this beautiful whole. And we're learning new concepts and new depths and new um, nuances to who God is and what he's called us to. Um, so, so that's the beauty of God's word is it's, it's not is it this or is it this. It's, it's, it's the complexity of all of the above. He, he's just there's so much to it. And he's going, yes, it, it is this, but it's more. Yes, it's that, but it's deeper. Um, and so, so it, that's how the, 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 the rabbis used to navigate the word of God as this beautiful diamond um, with so many beautiful facets that are there to discover and that aren't in opposition to each other, but make up this beautiful jewel. Um, and the other part of God's word and, 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 and this is that 
the, the rabbis understood because of, of this being a holistic kind of thing, it, we've got to understand that the Hebrew language and, and Aramaic and Greek, but particularly Hebrew, is, is an incredibly rich language and the, 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 the cultural understanding of, of writing is, is so much richer than ours in the sense of when the rabbis come to, to God's word, their, under, their, their, their belief and understanding is that absolutely everything that God wrote was intentional and for a purpose. In other words, every name every number, um, if, if it was a number of kilometers or steps to a place, whether it was a number of fish in a net, um, whether it was the name of a thing and the meaning of that name, everything was there for a meaning, for a reason, and um, nothing's there by mistake. God is intentional about everything in Scripture. Um, and so a thing is never just a thing. If it's there, there's a deeper meaning to it. And and that's the understanding of, of thing, and that's how they, they navigate and explore it. And because of that, um, you know, there, there's a whole there's these layers of richness that we, we just don't navigate much. The, the the numbers is a is a big thing for the Jewish people in that every letter has a number and then the sum total of the word, word that number has a meaning and and and, and it, it adds again, it adds to the bigger understanding of the word itself. Um, and and that's a concept that happens again and again in in biblical understanding of homonyms. You know, a homonym is is as we we talk about homonyms are like bank and bank. A bank is spelled the same, but but one is where you put your money, and the other keeps a river in line. Now, homonyms in in, in Hebrew understanding, specific, specifically in Scripture, homonyms were there to feed the other one. So if if a word had three meanings, if you want to say it's the same word, but three different meanings, they wouldn't be in contradiction to each other, but they would feed each other. So it would be this in with, with this added richness to it, with this part to it as well. And we're going to, we're going to deal with one of those tonight, today, but it's, it's it, everything about scripture is, is these, these, these complexity of nuances that come together and go They you know, it's, it's never just plain there, there, there's these levels that it's, it's greater understandings and meanings and, and and again with the numbers we we see that you know just specific numbers have different meanings in scripture we, we gave a, a list out last year of those but then as i said the value of numbers and, and people you know get oh it's new age it's, it's numerology but we need to also remember, always remember that god is the author of all things and and the devil's not creative he just distorts so whether it's the rainbow or you know numbers or whatever God has a perfect way of doing it. And, and we, we need to be careful not to throw the baby out with the bathwater because the understanding with the rabbis was that God used numbers in Scripture. And we're going to see some of that tonight. But I, I'm just needing to put this out there that we don't, we, we again, I, as we dive into this, we understand that literally that's what we're doing. We're diving into this this deep pond of God's revelation and, and there's layers upon layers and there's depth upon depth and, and the, 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 the deeper we go, the more we will encounter the different, the, the, it will be just, it'll be different um, and, and how we experience things will be different. Um, so yes, that's the journey we get called on to. So with that in mind, let's get back to the Song of Songs. Now, what was, what is the purpose of Song of Songs? What, what was the, what's the story behind or the, 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 the history behind the Song of Songs. And I actually have given in your notes, the story hidden in Song of Songs is, is like, I found a piece written and um, it was really well written. So I, I've, I've added it to your notes, but it says the major theme of the story is the transforming power of love. And that's, that's it. That's what Song, is, Song of Songs is about. It's the transforming power of God's love. It's the, the tale of a nobody who captures the heart of a king and a king who loves her into her destiny through the power of prophetic words. Words spoken to her will transform a broken, burnt-out girl into the queen who reigns with her king. And then the sub-theme is, is, is the story of how he, he gets this girl to the mountains where she will rule and reign with him. But drop down to the last paragraph, and I just want to read it because there's so many beautiful truths in this that I want us to have a look at. God never views you in the light of your history. He only sees you in the light of your destiny. Isn't that the goodness of God? That when he looks at us, he He doesn't see us by what we've done or who we were or what we, you know, what we're engaged in. Um, but he looks at us in going, he knows exactly why he created us and the destiny that he has for us. Um, and I just think that's powerful. It says, your history is nailed to the cross. The love of God is totally Un, uh, the, the love of God is totally um, unrelated to the fail to your failures or behavior. 
and this we see in Song of Songs, but we need to understand that it's our story too. That that this this book that is about this this God of love who who takes this journey with us. Um and and we see that that his love, the bridegroom's love to the for the Shilamite, God's love for us, is the same at the beginning when she was dirty and and feeble and lost and broken to the end where she's mature and he's bride and ruling and reigning with him. He, he loves her as much. L the love doesn't change. Her, her condition and, and her behavior doesn't change his love for her and it doesn't change his love for us. Um, who we were in the beginning, um, when we first came to God with all our faults and flaws and fo fo foibles and failures, he loved us as much that day as he will one day when we reach our full destiny in Christ and we become all that he has called us to be. His love never changes. He loves us fully. Um, and it says, love puts a crown on your head and watches you grow up to fit it. Love decrees um, your perfection when you are not even close to worthy. Love blesses you with every spiritual blessing at the front end. And I just want us to stop for a moment there. Love let me read it again. Love blesses you with every spiritual blessing at the front end. And uh, that's that's the reality for the Shulamite. The king, when he came, loved her and had everything available for her right up front. Before she matured, before she became who she was meant to be. The same is, things, the same is true for us. When we receive Jesus in our fallen state, um, when we receive Jesus... There was this beautiful exchange where I gave him all my junk and all my life and my f shortcomings and my failures. And he gave me all that is him and all that he has won and all. So when, when I became a Christian at the front end of my relationship with him, he gave me everything I would need for life and godliness. There is not one thing more that I need from God. Not one thing more. It's all there. My cupboard is full. That's the way I see it. <laughs> the picture I like to see it. God has given us right from the beginning. I have all the peace I would ever need. I have all this, the, the power, the resurrection power. The Bible says the same power that is in you and in me is the, the power that raised Christ from the dead. From the day that we were Christian, not one day. It's not this incremental growth. It's not this, I gain more power or I gain more peace or I gain... It, it, none of that. None of that is true. Sometimes we live like that. Like God's got this carrot that he's leading us on with. But he said, no... When you came to me, I gave you everything that is me. My full peace, my full authority, my full power, my full joy, my full love. I can't love you anymore. You can't have any more of my peace. You have it in its entirety, in the front end. And I just love that because it's not this thing of we need to earn or deserve. Right from the beginning, you're thinking, you're mine and we've done this glorious exchange. The journey is now to walk that out in maturity. And that's a different story because... I need to learn to go, okay, I, I have God's peace. I don't need to ask for God's peace, but I do know how I need do need to take it, learn to how to take it out of the cupboard, so to speak, and how to to stand on it, how to live from it, how to release it to the world around me, how how it how how to allow his peace, his power, whatever, to 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 how to assimilate it, to engage in it and to live in it. And that's that's the journey of maturity. But that's that we have everything that we need. Okay. So let's go back to the story again and the, the main characters. Who are the main characters? And we established that it was the Shulamite. Remember, Shulamite, Solomon, same root word, um, one masculine, one feminine. In other words, he, he saw himself in her. That, that's that's his, him in the story. He is um, the Shulamite woman and she is the picture of of the soul, of our soul and the journey that our soul makes in, in our relationship with the king, with the shepherd king who is who is Jesus? Who is God um, in, in this journey? And uh, we, we see this dynamic. And then we have a group of people. Um, in the beginning, they're called the, the daughters of, of Jerusalem. They later become the daughters of Zion. And we'll unpack that later. But they're basically like, I want to say ladies in waiting. They're always around her. They, they're watching. They watch this whole story. And so in this narrative, they play off the narrative. They comment about the narrative of going, hmm, sure, see this happening. And wow, look at that. And at the end, they're going, hang on. We want that kiss. Kiss us. We want to become, and they become the Shulamite woman, and the story starts again. So it's, 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 as they watch her, they are challenged, they are changed, and they get to the point of going, yes, pick me, pick me, kiss me. And we start again. 
And then we have um, the, the third, well, the, the other group of people. So there, there's a king, the Shulamite, the, the, the daughters of Jerusalem, and then there's the watchmen. Now in chapter 3, the watchmen are these these. The watchmen are the overseers. They the overseers of the church because the, the understanding is the the vineyard of the city is is the church and the watchmen watch it. They they oversee it, um, and they protect it and they 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 watch it, um, um, look after it at night and um, they are they form the gates of protection. So that they're the gatekeepers, um, and they the watch over the souls uh, they at night and. God has placed them in this position to oversee um, and, and to be a covering over the souls that are under them, over the people that are under them. Um, and we, we see them as representatives of the king. They work for the king. They serve the king by serving the people, by protecting the people, by leading the people, by growing the people. So they, they the, 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 the men and women in, that God places in, in the church body to, to act as watchmen and, and shepherds. Um, for his people but then you have in chapter five you have watchmen again but these are another breed of watchmen these watchmen are uh, abusive controlling insecure and they take away her covering and they 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 um, misinterpret her motives and they don't understand her passion and and whether it's jealousy or whether it's just ignorance or complete misunderstanding there, there's this this uh, this this growing tension and hurt that evolves she, she's hurt by them um, and there's this friction and huge misunderstanding now as I said, remember this is the, this is our story. We are the Shulamite, the journey of the soul. Je Jesus is our bridegroom king. This is our journey um, into the fullness of Him, into the fullness of our destinies, into this transformative love. So, so as we look at this picture, it's not just looking at a picture removed. This is our story. And here it's saying, and, and let's be honest, somewhere in our life we're gonna we're gonna walk into this bunch. Um, we're gonna I engage somehow. Um, with with this misunderstanding that happens and how many people have I heard that have left churches and left um, God and left his people because you know misunderstandings with pastors or, or misunderstandings in of of, of, of um, positions or understandings of topics or whatever the case is there's there's this friction between leadership church leadership and the watchman in essence and 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 the bride and it creates huge misunderstanding um and so a lot of people have been hurt and leave but it's very interesting in this picture of the shulamite at this point this challenge of navigating this misunderstanding navigating the hurt and the offense and all that goes with it is is her last and greatest test before she 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 gets she she um, moves up into maturity. It's not something that God says allows her to her bridegroom allows to break her. He goes, no, this is is the test. This how you deal with misunderstanding and, and offense and bitterness is is what will lead you into maturity into into growing in that. So it's very interesting. But we'll we'll unpack all of that as we go along. But yes, the main theme of Song of Songs is love, um, and it's 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 a beautiful word. It's a hub, which is which is godly love. It, but it's it's greater than agape, which is the Greek word for it. The, the Hebrew understanding for hub is it's otherly love. It is so big. It is so so other than it, it 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 is it is blows your mind that's the kind of love and and it talks about it's it's transformative love you cannot engage this love and be the same it transforms it's unconditional and it's transforming um, and so that's the love that it's talking about in song of songs and and it's it's beautiful we see it we see it played out and uh and obviously because the whole theme is love and we see this up we, it is repeated a number of times in fact it's repeated eight times and eight is the number of completion. So it's it's this picture of of complete love, of perfect outworking of this love in us. And so so here we have this 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 completeness, complete love that is that is everything that we would we would need to engage to experience it in its fullness. Then we have another word that is repeated a number of times in Song of Songs, and it's the word my beloved. And it's used toward the king. So that the bridegroom king is called my beloved. And it's mentioned 23 times in Song of Songs. 
And there's only one other place in scripture that it's mentioned three times. And that's Isaiah chapter five. And I put parts of it, go and read the whole of it in your own Bible, but parts of it in your notes. But I just love the way it starts. So Isaiah chapter five from verse one, it says, let me sing a song for the one I love called, and this is what the song's called, my lover or my beloved in his vineyard. My beloved planted a vineyard on a fertile hill. Now, it's so cool because that is the imagery of Song of Songs. It's, it's the beloved and his vineyard, the church, and he's, he's, he's navigating and tending it. But in this, in Isaiah 5, if you read on, it tells you that my beloved or the beloved is Yahweh, is God. Now, we, we talked about this a lot, but, but when we navigate scripture and we navigate allegory and all of those things in scripture, we never just suck our thumb as to what the meanings of these things are. We go back into scripture and scripture interprets scripture. And this is one of those places where, where again, it's a nod to the bridegroom king being Jesus, being God, because here in Isaiah chapter 5, it tells us that the beloved is God. Um, so it's, it's, it's a nice... Um, reiteration of that truth because remember we said it's not Solomon it's God he was the shepherd king Solomon was never that um and of course Jesus was the ultimate shepherd king he's our good shepherd um so there, there's all of these analogies but just another one of those texts is is let's go back to the numbers so the word beloved appears 23 times in Song of Songs three times in Isaiah 5, which gives you 26 times in the whole of the Bible, in the whole of the New Testament, and in the Old Testament, sorry, that, that, that beloved appears, it is 26 times. Now, 26 is an important number. The word Yahweh, spelled like the Jewish people spend, spell it, like, because remember, that's the name of God, it's so sacred, they actually can't write it out in its fullness. There's, there's it's only consonants, there's no, there's no vowels. Um, but it's Y-H-W-H. Yahweh. And the numerical sum of those those letters, if you took the, the numerical number for each of those letters and you added up, would get to be 26. So 26 is always seen as the number of God. And it's the number of beloved. Interesting enough, it's also the number of love, of godly love. So it's 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 such a rich um thing where God's going, do you see it's me? And I, and I reiterated in scripture and I reiterated in the numbers and I reiterated in, in the truth of function and it's all there. Scripture interpreting scripture. Okay, so we have this, this goalkeeping girl who comes and she, we'll read more about it, but she's in a bad place. She's been abused and there's been a lot of bad things and, and she knows of the king. She knows the king. She, she, she knows exactly who he is and how to connect with him because she's, she calls the very first line of, 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 song, of Song of Songs, as we'll see now, is her calling out to him. And interestingly, the minute she does, he's, he instantly appears. But we'll get into that probably a bit more next week. But so she knows him. But there's something missing. She's a bit like the daughters of Zion at this point, or the daughters of Jerusalem, who, who are watching as possibly others are being kissed by, by the bridegroom and going, hang on, I want that. And, and she gets to a point where she, she's desperate. I want to say she's, she's passionate. She's craving, she's craving this, that it overrides everything else. Nothing else matters. It, 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 it is like, I don't care what, this is what I need. I need him. I need him to kiss me. Um, because that, if you look at your notes, is the very first verse. And I've put, um, in your notes it looks a bit different, but I've put the Passion Translation and in some other translations. And it, the other translations may vary from time to time, but that's just so that you can see the differences in translation. Um, but in the English Standard Version, it says, The Song of Songs, which is, Sol which is Solomon's, and it says, The bride confesses her love, and she's speaking, and she says, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For your love is better than wine. And in the Passion Translation, it says, The most amazing song of all by King, by King Solomon. And the Shulamite says, Let him smother me with kisses. His spirit kissed the vine. So kind are your caresses. I, I drink them in like the sweetest of wine. So there's this, her very first line is, Let him kiss me. Let him kiss me. And so she, she, she's, she's desperate for this. And, and, um, 
we see she she's got to this place of she she's desperate for him she's desperate to engage with him and she calls out um and i love it because it's at this place it's it's there's no yoke there's no I've got to do this, or I, I there's a bondage to do this. It is just pure desire driven. Desperation, craving, passion, desire driven. Not have to, not got to, not I need to understand how this works. It's just let him. Let him. Just let him. And maybe the key to our Christian life is that. Is that we stop and we just go, I've got to let him. It's it's that it's that stopping the striving completely and just yielding. I'm going. It's not about me doing. It's just about me going. Here I am. I, I surrender all. I, I yield to you. I I just I'm gonna let you. It, it's yours. You come in and take over. Um, one of my old Sunday school teachers said, "You take the driving seat." But that's it. It's just like that's it. Here's my life. It's all yours. Um, absolutely no striving. I just lay it down. And the key of Song of Songs is to learning is is learning to let him be everything for you. It, see, it's it's not just surrendering to nothing, but surrendering to him being everything. So, and that's it's an interesting concept because sometimes I think our surrender is like is a is fatalistic, in the sense of like oh I give up that kind of just whatever. Where that's not this year. This is yielding. It's going, I, I'm going to let him. I'm, I'm surrendering unto something. I am surrendering to him. Where suddenly I'm not surrendering to giving up and nothing and fatalism. I'm giving up. I'm surrendering to him and him being everything that I need and want. That in him, let him. Him plus nothing else is everything I need and want. It's that surrender to the fullness of him, not to nothingness, not to disappointment, not to, 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 you know, disillusionment, but to the fullness of him, of him being everything. It's me yielding to the point of going, there is nothing I need or want that is more important than him. It's not a sum of him plus something is a happy life or a fulfilled life or enough. He is enough. He is joy. He is my happiness. He is everything I need. And I want in one. And, and then we've got to get to that place of yielding. Us as Christians, you know, we, 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 we chase breakthrough and we chase many things. But maybe we need to get to these four, four words. You know, so, so the first two words were let him. And then the second two words are kiss me. Let him kiss me. If that is not the most amazing first line of a, of a love story, I don't know what else is. I mean, come on now. The very first line of the book is, let him kiss me. That's it. It's completely surrender and desire. And one of going, I, I don't, just, it's all you. And I give over to the fullness of you and I, and I receive the fullness of you. And I wonder if, if, if that is, isn't actually the key for us as Christians, that, that we all need to get to that place of let him kiss me. Because we, we seek so many other things. We seek affirmation. We seek prophetic words. We seek breakthrough. We seek miracles. And in essence, there's nothing wrong with those things. But she doesn't seek any of that. She just gets to the point of going, I just need you. Just let him kiss me. Just you come and you take over and just you let him kiss me and the irony is i think when we get to that place then god breaks through and what happens we receive the most amazing word from him we receive breakthrough we receive miracles in our lives maybe we need to stop chasing the hand and seek the face you know, that, that that concept comes from the story of Moses, where it speaks about, in our, most of our Bibles, it's, in, it's interpreted that Moses sought God face to face, that he didn't seek his hand, that he saw he sought his face. Um, so the intimacy side of it. But actually, it's even more intimate than that. The actual Hebrew word is not face to face, but mouth to mouth. Um, and funny enough, the ESV version translates it 
directly from from the, the Hebrew and you'll see it um, in Numbers 12 it says with him I, I speak mouth to mouth clearly and not in riddles so this is this is Moses and God um, and he beholds the form of the Lord why then were you afraid to speak against the servant Moses so so there's this this picture of um, this this where Moses connects with God and the actual words is mouth to mouth that we don't seek his hand and what he's doing, but we seek his him, his mouth. We, we want to engage with him. We want to kiss him. And and at this point, most of us are going, ew, what? No. Um, well, what does that mean to kiss? You know, <laughs> I, that, that's just weird, Mel. But let's unpack that word kiss a little bit more. We'll, 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 we'll unpack this all a little bit longer, but I want to go back to the Hebrew. Let's, let's look at this word kiss. Let him, the Hebrew word is nashak. Um, N A S H A Q, um, and and that's one of these homonyms that we were speaking about, where it has, it has three meanings, and they all feed into each other to enrich the meaning. So nashak is number one, means to kiss, and we get that. So um, let him kiss me, but it's not a singular word; it's in the plural. So let him kiss me and keep on kissing me. Let him never stop. Let um, it, it's it's a thing of of. Over and over and over again, it's 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 this passionate, never enough kind of kiss and love. First word, second word, that nashak means. Let him nashak me means it can mean to take a drink of wine, and you go. Eh? But it, remember now, the the rabbis and the ancient fathers believed that the one integrated another. So the, the way they literally um, interpreted that was. Um, to take a drink of your kiss is better than wine. That's how they would have interpreted it. To take a drink of your kiss. In other words, the, the, the understanding was that as, as, as wine is pleasurable and, and, and it fills and it represents the human needs. And, and there's this verse, and we're going to unpack it later in the, in the verse. There's this verse in Psalm 104 where, where it talks about wine being um worldly pleasures and representing worldly pleasures and so this picture of here is going your kisses is is your kisses are better than wine it's it's better than the worldly pleasures but there's also the, the understanding of and it's it, it, it it's intoxicating your kisses your love that you're pouring out to me is intoxicated uh, in other words i'm love drunk it's it's like let him nashak me let him Completely just kiss me and keep kissing at me until I'm inebriated in his love, inebriated in who he is. Okay, if we all completely freak out, if you're really battling with the picture of kiss, the understanding of this word is, is God awakening your heart with his love and power. So, so it's, it's maybe a better way to look at it than if, if you're battling with it is, is, is our concept of, of um, CPR. Giving mouth to mouth, which we call the kiss of love, yeah, or and, and that's the picture where, where where when you give the person a kiss of love, you you imparting, you imparting breath and and power and life back into that person, and that is what God's 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 kiss does. It's God engaging you so that in such a way that He pours out His love and His power into you, and it awakens your heart. Which is, which is again, that picture of kiss all the way through scripture. And I know I'm getting a little bit tired here, but just bear with me. Let's go all the way back to Adam. When, when scripture says that God breathes on Adam, it's, it's a literary tool. Basically what he's saying, what, what, the, the, the actual what he said there was God kissed Adam into life. But, but the idea in the understanding is that your kiss is, is, is where you share breath. It's, it's, God's kiss was him breathing life and power and awakening Adam. Remember, he was just, the human side of him was clay. But the divinity, because the, it was where, 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 where um, humanity and divinity combine and uh, um, unite. And so the divinity part is God breathes in him to, and awakens his heart with love and power. That's that breath. So, so God kissing you is God coming in and awakening you with his love and power. And we see him doing it with, with Adam. That is how Adam was born into life, was God kissed him, awoken him with his love and power. Same word, same word usage is used when Jesus 
breathed on his disciples and they received the Holy Spirit. Yeah, no, it, he kissed them. It's, it's that thing. Okay, okay. He out of his out of his mouth, he he imparted to them breath to breath. Um, he imparted to them um the the spirit of life that awoken um and and brought his love into them and imparted the fullness of him into the fullness uh, of them. That's what a kiss is. It's 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 the imparting of breath and spirit into the other one and awakening that love and that power. How cool is that that that, that picture? Um that, that that's that's what God's doing. He he comes close and he he engages with us intimately in such a way that he breathes into us um and he awakens our heart with his love and his power. So she's going, let him kiss me, let him come and awaken my heart with love and power um, in such a way that, that it overwhelms me, that, I, that I'm inebriated, that I'm love drunk in this process. But okay, that's the first two words. Now the, the third word that fits the third usage of nashok is, is a strong male terminology. And basically it means uh, to take up arms um, and ready yourself. Um, to take up weapons and, and be equipped for war. That's the picture. So it is this militant stance um, of, of, of taking up. But but it's, it's it, again, it's not separate from it. It goes into that love and the inebriated in the sense of going, when I allow God to love me, to kiss me in such a way that I am love drunk, that, that he, 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 when I allow God to, to breathe in me and awaken my, my me with his power and his love, and I'm completely... I'm completely transformed and and affected by and and because that's what wine does it 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 changes us um we are completely affected by it then I am equipped to be his warrior it is that that equips me um it it's it's the kiss that equips you to be the warrior God wants you to be it's <laughs> we, we, do you see these little hints every now and then that come up that we understand that we so don't understand spiritual warfare where God's like I want you to be a warrior a champion a daybreaker I want you to be the one that comes in and 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 obliterates um curses of people and comes in and changes your family and sets your family and your city free um and, and comes in and brings change and healing into areas he your healing glory wherever you walk um and he's like, I want you to do that by by absolutely being overflowingly infected with my love and my power pouring out uh, out of awakened heart. <laughs> so not what warfare looks like for us. Okay, so so God's warfare is comes out of love. For you to be the warrior he wants you to be, you have to be transformed by his love. Otherwise, we're fighting from the wrong place. Because you see, th there is the, the warrior stance that comes into this, um, into Song of Songs. And we'll see it more predominantly in, in chapter 4, where he says, he calls and he says, I want you to, to um, I want, sorry, he says, what I really want is a bride that will wage war with me in the leopard's lair and the lion's den. Um, he, he wants a bride that will wage war from him, but from the root of intimacy, from the root of love and empower effervescing out of you he wants a bride with combat boots on i i get to do his kind of warfare his way by loving he wants to love this world into loveliness he wants to love us into loveliness and he wants us to love the world around us into loveliness that's warfare it's it's we come against the opposing spirit we where there's hatred and there's devastation we come in with love and power transformative love and power it's massive so to be who god wants us to be we need him to to nashak us to to kiss us to inebriate us in his his love and power and awaken us um so that we can become so that we can be equipped to become the warriors that stand with him to be his warrior bride and to be all that he wants us to be make sense it's concepts that, that that blow your mind. I know <laughs> they blow mine, um, but it's it, it's important for us uh, us to get hold of this. It's important for us to navigate this um, as as we unpack. Um, and so yes, so so we, we we look at this and we see that the kiss is so important. The kiss is how we are equipped to change the world. 
I want to go out and change the world. And, and we do this. And so often we go, I want to become the person who I want to be. I'm going to change, affect people's lives. I, I'm going to, you know, <laughs> love people better. I'm going to go out there and, 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 and change the world. And God's going, hang on. The only way we get to do that is to allow him to kiss us, to, to, to allow his, his love and his power to be birthed in us so that we do it from a place of rest, not of striving. And, and it's a picture of where God says, you know, we love because he first loved us. And it's that picture of going, if I want to go out in the world and I want to love people into wholeness and I want to carry his love and, and draw them into his love, the only way that I can do that, and I want to love God more, the only way I can love people and love God more is not by striving to do so, but by allowing him to love me. Not so. If, if, if that concept in the beginning was we love because he first loved us, I don't have that in my capacity to love people or to love God more unless he pours that love into me. How cool is that transaction? He's like, I want you to love me more and I want you to love my people into wholeness. And how do you do that? Not by striving, not by trying to be better, but by coming to his feet and allowing him to love you more. You see, that picture of God is love is a little bit of, <laughs> it smuggles with the brain. It's so much bigger than we understand that God is love. And we, we, we've said this a thousand times and you know this, but we still in our heads, I think we still read God is love, but, or your, your but, or there's fine print. And God's like, no, no, no. I am love. Done. I am not love if you change or if you're better or if you don't do that or if you sort out your love life no i am love that is who i am i am not love if you this nation or if you that no i am love there, there's no ifs or buts or maybes and and there's no limit to his love and we battle with this too of going okay now you've loved enough we, we actually can't love enough because this love of God is transformative love. So if we want to see change in a world, what the world needs is not chastisement in the understanding of what we do. They, they, we, they need more love. Remember the scripture says by, by encountering God, it's like in God's love, it's like heaping coals on someone's head. It's, it's, it's this weird dynamic that we don't understand, but God's going, if you want to see a world transformed, don't smack them, don't hate them, don't go to war with them, but love them. It's the kindness of God that leads man to repentance. Oh, goodness. We, we so don't get that. I mean, God's really calling us to this. I'm going, guys, we, we, we need to work in the opposite spirit to the world. We don't wage war like the world does. We love. And, and sometimes... That love is 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 making a stand. And, and I, don't get me wrong, this is not excusing sin or any of those things. We, we deal with the sin, but we never deal with anything without love. And, and that's a much bigger conversation, but we don't. I don't get to enter any conversation or any situation without God's love. Because otherwise I'm not carrying the his truth and I'm not going to get his outcome in the story. So it's this fullness of God's love. You know, uh, Galatians 3, uh, 5.23, I think it's in your in your verses. Um, it, yes, it says, the last part of it, it's a list of the fruit of the Spirit. And then it says, against such things there is no law. We, we, we do want to get to a place where we're going, okay, but there's a law to that, to God loving that person or in that situation or whatever but the fruit of the spirit of which love is the first one and the greatest of them it says love what about against love there is no law against god's love and the enormity of god's love there is no law against it there's no limitations to it Love is not, a, is not a, a duty, but a destiny that clings to every one of us. He has a plan to make us more loving than we ever thought we would be. So will we let him kiss us? Will you let him kiss you? Will you let him? Will you surrender and yield to his kisses? To him awakening um, you with his love and his power? God has so much in store for us. 
and he's calling us deeper and he's calling us into a realm that is mind-blowing but it's not out of striving or religion but out of rest and out of love as you go into this week may you go in that rest and that love and may you let him god bless